I'm Bruce Leslie and I'm Regional Ranger Special Operations uh, that has a small grouping of special rangers that do specific jobs throughout the Kruger Park in the IPZ and outside of the IPZ. Um, the Kruger Park being just under 2 million hectares, approximately the size of Israel. We're in trouble. This is a serious onslaught on our natural resources. It's unabated, it's relentless. A normal day in this place is where you um, arrive with 10 objectives and you go back home with 15. It's a very busy environment with the current threat um, and the current losses that we have. Current stats so far this year we've lost 655 rhino, uh, both black and white. The poachers don't discriminate between white and black rhino. We have made 147 arrests, uh, recovered 84 firearms. Spoor reports this year alone is about 1,036 spoor reports, meaning in that there's pro that is in a group of three. So a single spoor report can be between two to four individuals. Uh, and that kind of gives you a scale as to the amount of illegal people hunting at any one time um, over a period of 11 months. Uh, so 1,200 spoor reports in 11 months is a huge amount of people operating illegally within this 20,000 square kilometers. And obviously there are hot spots within that area depending on where the rhino densities are. The current procedure is that the field rangers are patrolling every day. They are in a listening post or in a waylay, uh, patrolling on foot, looking for incursions by armed groups of poachers. As soon as they hear a shot fired or detect spoor, they report that to the ops room. Eh? From there, the ops room make, makes a decision as to where do we deploy the rapid response teams eh? and which is the most likely chance of success. For many years now, since the rhino, the so-called rhino war started, mention was made of technology. But it was always these vague one paragraph mentions. And I realized once I've got acquainted with the situation that we will need a force multiplying effect of technology. I could think of nobody else and no instance else to approach than the CSIR as a technology partner. And I approached them in January of 2013. And that was the start of an alliance. We later that year signed a formal agreement. And throughout that year, we worked very hard to compile what I call the technology roadmap. Many people talk about technologies. If you knew then or know now even, what will be applicable? What will work? What will make the difference? It was hard work and slog, and the CSIR came to the party in a big way financially, manpower and expertise-wise, sharing what they have and tapping into many resources. Towards October last year, we then realized what can work. We had a good idea of the roadmap and where it can take us. The whole process was accelerated with the Buffett Foundation grant of 250 million rand, and we had to go into a higher gear. We had to go very fast. And yet again, the CSIR came to the party. They just threw resources on this since January of this year so that in March we could make a submission that got us the grant and that is what we're implementing now. The CSR is responsible to support Sandparks in the op optimization of the ranger system. The three areas of focus is currently the observation system where we assist Sandparks rangers to observe day and night over short and long distances and make sure that they can see whatever threats there are in the Kruger National Park. The second area of responsibility is the weapon systems that they've got deployed, where the rangers have the ability then to engage with the threats over short and long distances and also day and night. And then also the third area of responsibility is then the personal equipment of the rangers to make sure that they can deploy over short periods or longer periods of time and in specialized conditions and make sure that they can then optimally utilize all the equipment and their skills to counter the threat. The CSR is also responsible to look at ranger mobility and in that specific domain there are two focus areas. 
We are looking at the optimization of the current capabilities, which are the land cruiser systems that is currently deployed. It is then utilized to look at the optimization of the reaction force capability to react quickly over short and long distances in the specific areas of deployment and also to optimize the equipment of the rangers and also the specialized equipment that must uh, be deployed in that specific area. CSR is also responsible to look at collaborative research and also development activities between various stakeholders and one area of collaboration is in secure communications. As the CSR is looking at command and control systems, it is also very important to secure the information flow over that command and control systems, especially uh, radio frequency communication systems and then also other communication means. One of that areas of secure communications will then focus on making sure that uh, the rangers can securely communicate with the headquarters or the operations rooms and then also within the command and control structures of CN Sandparks. The official partners uh, for this specific project is then Secret, StopRhinoPoaching.com and the CSR. Currently the ranger corps and also Sandparks have identified various areas of ranger training that should be updated and also upgraded to, the, to address the current threat. The first request was that the CSR do a study on poaching tactics to understand the tactics and techniques being deployed by the threat or the poachers to the current Ranger Corps to do a full understanding and a description of that capability and then eventually to transfer that knowledge into policy and also doctrine. You see the technology, there's so much variety in it and it, it comes at every level from the man at the field all the way through to the operational centre. For example, the man in the field that's doing rapid response might need a bulletproof vest. So the advice we can get from CSRR and in particular TSO is very useful because then we can look at a whole range of system and that's their business and so that's what makes CSR so valuable to us. We can look at the field ranger, we can look at the rapid response team and the equipment they need to do their particular job in the field, all the way through to the investigator, to the, op the mission area manager, to radar detection and other technologies that are really outside of our field. Um, and so there's a whole cross section and variety of technologies that are useful at every level of this fight against rhino poaching. All these technologies are mainly focused on surveillance, early warning, detection and tracking. It would be useless to have these if you don't have a nerve center and that is why we have the operations room. In this room, in this nerve center, you will have situational awareness, you will have decision support, you will have some predictive analysis. It will allow you to deploy intelligently, it will allow you to control deployments to make timeliest decisions. It is all about sending the range of force to the right place and not all over the bush. This is the start of a journey. This will take quite some while to perfect over the next year specifically. As we employ the various technologies in the zone and as we learn and teach our people to master the technology so then in the operations room, we do sound planning and we control operations to get one step ahead, to be better than the poachers or the syndicates behind them, to get proactive and to ensure that the results are achieved, namely to get the rhino poaching down and ultimately eradicate it as far as we can. The centre is very necessary. We are not control freaks, but you must know what you are doing. And it's big. We're sitting with two million hectares of you. A, a poacher can walk past you 50 metres from you in the dark here. You have to know what's going on, you have to know where the tracks are, you have to study where they come in, you have to know what they do over full moon, you have to know when they come to the shopping centre, before Christmas, after Easter weekend, whatever. These tendencies must be recorded and you must do operational research 
and you must plan in terms of, of, of how these things happen. And like I said just now, you must also be creative. You must look at this picture and you must have the capability to deploy um, your, your mental capabilities to, to, to win the war, to, to, to beat the enemy. Um, for that, you, you, you can't work on the back of a cigarette packet. You must do the best you can. The difference between us and them is our intellectual capacity, our IT capability and our communications. They can also track and walk and shoot and, and, and hunt and whatever. We, we, we are on par, except for this center that you are sitting in now. CMR Echo is a system that we customized specifically for anti-rhino poaching and for the environmental asset management. It's currently used in the operation center in the Kruger and it will move to the new operation center. The big idea around CMR is to be able to integrate all the different elements of data that we can get. We can get data from people reporting, we can get data from technical sensors in the field, we even get reports from tourists that notice things and we can capture all of these things in CMR. CMO then assists the people in the park and the operations to understand what's happening, to see what's happening. We want to be more proactive in the operations. In order to do that, we have to look at the data, do analysis, find trends, look at the statistics. So there's a lot of modeling also that we can do using the data of Seymour that will then predict almost where the next thing can happen so that we can start planning where to put the limited resources that are already there. The technology impacted here will help us greatly in terms of a force multiplier. Um, we are low numbers on the ground and any technology that can give us the edge or an advantage in detecting fast, locating the poacher or the incursion where we can have a quicker and more effective response or rapid response to either arrest the people before they make, kill a rhino or directly after that they don't kill two or three rhino before we arrest them, that if they kill once, they must go to jail next. Next stop must be jail. They're trying to throw us to the wolves. We'll return with the pack. And in this pack, we'll have the CSIR as part of our pack.